Hey church family and Facebook friends, good to come with you again today with a, another quick word of encouragement. Um, so glad you're tuning in with us tonight and uh, hope this word will be a good encouragement to you today. Uh, we surely miss you and uh, each day I think we're in like the 555,000th day of quarantine it seems like for some of us and uh, we're ready for things to get back to normal. But until then, we're just going to continue to trust the Lord in all of this and uh, just wait for patience. I, I personally had to pray, Lord, give me patience because I'm not a very patient person. You can ask my wife. You can ask my children. I don't have very much patience, but uh, patience is what we need now. So I've been praying for patience, and I hope you will too. We miss the church. We miss being there on Wednesday nights and uh, seeing all our kiddos, all the kids that come in on Wednesday night. Uh, and sooner or later we'll get back to to normal but until then we're just going to trust the Lord but I tell you today we're, we're sitting on our back porch tonight just in joy in this wonderful day that the Lord has given us uh, admiring God's handiwork in his creation and I was thinking about man I sure do love our sanctuary but boy he's given us a beautiful sanctuary here tonight to, to worship him and that's what I love about it you can worship God wherever you're at uh, whatever you're doing you can you can worship God and give Him glory. And boy, I, just looking out over the the view here, seeing the beautiful creation that God has given us, so uh, we got something to praise Him about tonight. So I'm so thankful for you tuning in and thankful for His creation that He allowed us to have today. There's many uh, tonight that we need to continue to pray for, uh, especially many of those that are sick, still affected by the coronavirus. There's many that we uh, that we know. I think pretty much now everybody knows somebody personally that has been affected by it or a family member that has been affected by it. So uh, continue to remember all those. Uh, we just heard of this afternoon of, of a good Christian man passed away with the coronavirus. So pray for the the Jimmy Vaughn family and uh, keep them in your prayers this afternoon. Uh, it's such a difficult time. Uh, but uh, I know the Lord knows what he's doing and uh, we're just going to continue to trust him with that. Got some quick, uh, a quick, announcement tonight i want you to let, let you know about something uh, we've been planning something the last few days me and miss nicole and some others at the church uh this friday night good friday at 8 15 p.m i know somebody's gonna say 8 15 why 8 15 well we're wanting it to be dark we're waiting for the sun to go down we're gonna have a good friday uh message for you we're gonna have a good friday ser service for you at 8 15 on facebook live live from the church we're not gonna have preaching we are gonna have some scripture reading and we're gonna have some singing so uh, tune in just for the singing and uh, I think it'll be a wonderful time of reflection and a uh, reverence for what took place on that day the death of Jesus on the cross and what it means to us and uh, so we'll be we'll be doing that we, uh, Friday night at 8 15 so I encourage you to tune in I know you ain't got nowhere to go I mean you can't go anywhere so tune in and watch that and uh, I know it'll be a blessing to your heart tonight so I can't wait for that service and can't wait to hear the singers that'll be singing now, I'm excited about that excited about the songs we got lined up I know it'll be a blessing so tune in uh, I just got a quick word I want to share with you tonight the Lord's put on my heart I told Mr. Cole it's gonna be very short tonight and she said I don't believe you but I'm gonna try to be as short as I can as brief as I can but I do want to share this thought that's on my heart tonight but before I do that let's go to the Lord in prayer and then we'll get right into our message. Lord, we love you tonight. We thank you so much for all your many blessings. We thank you for allowing us to, Lord, worship you tonight, Lord, no matter where we're at, Lord, no matter what we're doing, no matter how bad our day has been or how good our day has been, Lord, we can still stop at this time and give you glory, give you honor, give you worship tonight. Lord, I love you, and I thank you for what you've done, and Lord, what this week means, and Lord, as we uh, look at it, and Lord, we reflect on what you went through on this last week of your life and lord there's a great sacrifice that you made how, how we just love you so much for it lord I, again i just pray for those that are affected i pray for our health care workers god just hedge them and keep them safe from this virus and those that's lost their lives god we pray for their families god and we pray that you give them understanding we pray that you give them grace and comfort lord in this time and lord for all those that's dealing with other things uh besides the uh, this sickness God we pray that you touch in those situations we know there's people dealing with all kind of things today that's not even related to this 
But, Lord, we know that you're in control of those things as well. God, I just love you tonight. Thank you for Jesus. Lord, lead God and direct us. Lord, just let us say what you need to be said, what you would have to be said tonight. Lord, let it glorify and honor you. And we'll just give you the honor and the praise for everything you do. Thank you so much for loving us. Thank you for saving my soul. Lord, if there's one that's lost that hears this, God, just speak to their heart tonight. Lord, let them draw them unto yourself, and Lord, that they might get saved. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. If you hear a dog bark here in just a few moments, uh, it, it may we got a beagle running a rabbit back there, so uh, maybe I won't run any rabbits tonight. Maybe I'll stay on course, but he is running a rabbit, so if you hear, that's what it is, and uh, it's just the country, but I'm thankful for that tonight. You know, I, as I was thinking about this week, each day this week, I've made sure I read scripture and, and kind of followed the steps of Jesus in this last, this holy week that we're observing the last week of his life and all that he went through and all that he, the, the, the steps that took him up to the cross of Calvary and to the, the tomb and, and, and raise and rising from the dead. And I, I, we, we looked at Sunday, Palm Sunday, as he entered into Jerusalem, a, a king, a hero, as Mr. Cole called it. And each day they, he, his fame can kind of faded a little bit on Monday, he cleansed the temple and people didn't like that. And, Tuesday, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they, they quizzed him and tried to catch him, uh, try to tie his doctrine up, in which they could not do that. He always had a, the right answer for them and uh, was able to answer them in the truth of the gospel and the truth of the word of God. And on Wednesday, it's kind of a day that you don't see a whole lot of stuff that, that Jesus did. It was a day of rest for Jesus. Jesus was had, had, had three very uh, excruciating days, three days where he... Uh, really ministered hard. He he taught the people there very hard, and um, there on Wednesday it was a kind of a day of rest. He was in Bethany. He was with uh, Mary and Lazarus and Martha at their house as he has stayed there. And of course, we know tomorrow will be the day of uh, of Passover. That was, as they observed the Passover uh, supper, the Last Supper there in the upper room, and then from that time on, he goes to the garden to the cross and. Uh, I've been doing that each day, and it's, it's really helped me. And boy, I tell you, it's, it's just, it's revealed to me the love of Jesus Christ. Oh, how he loves us. Church, I want you to know tonight, hey, praise the Lord, he loves us. I mean, just to see what he did, to see what he went through, all because he loved a sinner like me. That's just amazing. That's glorious tonight to me, to see that and to know that. And uh, I just want to praise his name. I want to tell him I love him tonight. Amen. We can go. We can have testimony service tonight. I want to say I love him for what he did for me. How he, how he loves me still each day. What a blessing it is to know the Lord as my Savior and as my King. And I, 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 if there's somebody that's watching that doesn't know him, I pray that, that tonight, if you don't know him, that, that something will be said or you'll see something that will draw you to him. This is the greatest feeling that you could ever imagine. There's nothing in this world that can touch the feeling of knowing that you're loved by the Lord and, and saved and secured and have a home in heaven. You know, and I, I was reading, I was thinking about this, this verse of Scripture, and it, it, the Lord kept bringing it to my heart. Paul wrote this in the book of Romans. Romans chapter 1, verse 16, he says this, he says this For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. To the Jew first and to also the Greek. Boy, I, I just want to say tonight, I'm not ashamed of my Savior, amen. I just thought about him hanging on that old rugged cross and uh, beaten and had his, his beard plucked out and the, the crown of thorns on his head and having the, the cat of nine tails. That just that The Bible says his visage was marred more than any man. He, you couldn't even recognize him as he hung on that cross naked and humiliated and spat upon. And he did that for me, and he did that for you, because he wasn't ashamed of us. He wasn't ashamed of our sins. And I want to say tonight, boy, I'm not ashamed of him. I'm thankful to be a child of the king tonight. And uh, I, I like how Paul said that. He, he said that as he wrote to these Romans. And this is what he was saying. I, I mentioned this last Sunday in my message as well. It says, he said this, I long to see you. He had never met those people, those believers there in Rome, but he really wanted to. And he said this, he said, when I get there, when I, when I am able to see you, he said this in 
Verse 15, so as much as is in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are there at Rome. He said, I'm, I got a message and I'm ready to preach. Amen. I I, I feel that tonight. I, I got a message for you tonight. Uh, just a quick word that I think will bless, you, uh, bless your heart. But he says this, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God unto salvation. Amen. The gospel of Jesus Christ. How is a man to be saved? Through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Except a man be born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. We will see that here in just a few moments. It's the power of God unto salvation. And I'm not ashamed of it, and I hope you're not tonight. And uh, I, I like what Paul said. You may say, well, that's easy for him to say. Well, that was a bold statement for Paul because Paul was about to go to Paul was about to go to uh, Rome. And he was saying this because there was an emperor there named Nero or a Caesar. Caesar at the time was named Nero, and he was one of the wickedest, vilest, uh, most anti-Christian Caesar that had ever been. And this is what Paul said. He said, when I get there, I don't care how bad he is. I don't care what he does to me. I'm not ashamed of the Lord. I'm going to preach his holy name. I'm going to preach the gospel of Jesus. Can I say today, we live in a pretty wicked world. We'd all agree about that. And there's a lot of folks that don't agree with the gospel of Jesus Christ. But I'm here to say tonight, I don't care what anybody says about me. I'm not ashamed of my Lord. And I'm going to tell somebody about him. And I, and I just enjoyed that. I wanted to share that with you tonight. But my, my, my verses, my two verses I really want to hit on tonight is in John chapter 19. Uh, this is after Jesus had been nailed to the cross. This is after Jesus had uttered those words, it is finished. He gave up the ghost, and he, he had died. And can I say this? There's been many that has claimed that he didn't really die. He was just passed out for a while. Listen, he died. He died on that cross. He, 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 he literally, physically died. He had to die to prove he was a man. But listen, can I tell you, on the third day, he got up to prove he was God. Amen. He was 100% God, and he was 100% man. He died, but he also lives again. And the Bible says after he was... He died on the cross. They came and they stuck that spear in his side and forth came out blood and water signifying how we are to be saved by the blood of Jesus Christ and how we are to be sanctified by the water and the washing of the word of God. And uh, then it says that, and I want to read in verse 38 and 39, and I'm going to give you this quick thought and be done. It says, and after this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him leave. He came therefore and took the body of Jesus. And there came also Nicodemus, which first came at night, or first came to Jesus by night, and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pound weight. As I was reading this story, that, that kind of stuck out to me, these two men. And I, my, my topic tonight, my thought is this, stepping out of the shadows. These are two men. The first one that says Joseph of Arimathea. We don't know a whole lot about Joseph of Arimathea through Scripture. He's mentioned in every gospel, but he's mentioned about this time in every gospel. He's the man that took Jesus off the cross. He is the man that had the, the tomb that he laid Jesus in. It was his own tomb. He was a rich man. Yeah, he had plenty of money, but he, he was also a follower of Jesus Christ. But it says but he was a follower of Jesus Christ, but secretly. Because he feared the Jews. He, he, he didn't do it out and open. He was a member of the Sanhedrin, just as Nicodemus was. The same people that, that, that brought all these false accusations against Jesus. He was a part of that, that group. But there's somewhere down in, deep inside when Jesus began to speak, faith came into the heart of Joseph of Arimathea. And he began to follow Jesus, but he did it secretly. I wonder if there's somebody out there tonight that may be following Jesus secretly. They're kind of, uh, they've heard his message. They, they've heard preachers on Facebook for the last month of preaching about this man, Jesus. And uh, boy, they've really heard that and they really want to get involved. They want to believe, but they're just worried about what people will say. You know, the only reason Joseph of Arimathea didn't come out and, and follow Jesus publicly because of all his Jewish friends that were against him. And he worried about what they'd say and they worried about what they would do. And I, well, there, there's probably a lot of people like that today that they would love to, to, to follow Jesus. And, and there's, a, there's something that's going on in their heart that they don't understand, but they're scared to, to, to take it forward because they're worried about the crowd they're hanging out with. 
And I tell you, don't worry about that crowd, amen. There's some good folks in the in the kingdom of God. There's some good folks in the family of God. And boy, I, I tell you, I've lost I've lost friends along the way because of my walk with the Lord, and uh, some that that I don't speak to anymore because that we just don't our lifestyles are not on the same course. And I tried to witness to them, uh, but listen, I tell you, God has put me with some of the greatest people that I've ever been a part of. I mean, some of the people that love you, some people that will that lift you up when you 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 need a shoulder to cry on. They're there, and I, I wonder if there's somebody here tonight needs to step out of the shadows. And just follow Jesus and do it publicly. Do it openly tonight. Then we see a man called Nicodemus. And we know the story of Nicodemus from John chapter 3. Probably the, the greatest chapter in the whole Bible. The chapter of love. And John 3.16 comes from us. But it says there, it says there was a man of the Pharisees. He was also, Nicodemus was also a Pharisee. Also a member of the Sanhedrin. He was a great teacher of the law of God and the law of Moses. It said the same came to Jesus by night. Now, why did he come to Jesus by night? Because he didn't want anybody to see. He didn't want anybody to see that he had questions about this man named Jesus. And he didn't want anybody to see that he, he was talking to this man named Jesus. But this is what Nicodemus said. He said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. He said, I've seen enough evidence. I've seen enough miracles that you've done, Jesus. I know that you're you're from God, that God has sent you. But I, I just got to know a little bit more. I need to know some, some more about what you're teaching and my, or more about what your doctrine expresses. And look, listen to what Jesus said. Very first thing, he says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. I want to say this tonight to you that's out there listening. There may be somebody across the internet that's listening that's never asked Jesus to, to, to save them before. The Bible says, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Listen, I want you to understand, doing good, being a good person, going to church, or giving to charities, or just doing all the good things, giving your money to a church or to a youth group or something like that, those aren't things that get you into heaven. Jesus said the only thing that gets you there is to be born again, to be born of the Spirit, to have a spiritual birth, to be spiritually born again. He told Nicodemus, he said, listen, you, you, Nicodemus was confused. He didn't understand exactly what that meant. But Jesus said, listen, you're looking at it all the wrong way. He said, listen, you need to be born of the Spirit and of water to be born again. He said this, he said, you need to be Except them be born of water and of the Spirit. We're born of water the first time we come into this world out of our mother's wombs. But when we ask Jesus by faith, believe that Jesus died on the cross for our sins, we're born again of the Spirit. I believe that Nicodemus was a saved man. I believe that because he heard the, the gospel. The Many have said that John 3.16 is the gospel in one verse. For God so loved the world. Do you know how much he loved you? He loved you enough to send Jesus to die for you. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever should believe in him should not perish, but have, have everlasting life. I believe when Nicodemus heard that, I believe Nicodemus put his faith in Jesus. Put his faith in a God that, that loved him so much that he would send the Savior for him. And I believe he was a saved man. I believe he got saved at this very time, but he didn't come out of the shadows. He still continued to follow Jesus secretly. But here in John chapter 19, we see both of these men stepping out of the shadows. They, they, they both come out into the open. They go to Pilate. They say, Pilate, let us take his body down. Let us prepare it for burial before the Sabbath comes. Let us make sure, and we, we do these things. What caused these men to step out of the shadows and say, I don't care what nobody thinks anymore. I don't care what those wicked men that hung him on that cross think anymore. What caused them to do that? I was thinking about that today, and, and Scripture doesn't tell us a whole lot about that, but just in my mind, I, I, I don't know where they were during his trial. I don't know where they were during his scourge. I don't know where they were during uh, the time he was hanging on the cross, but I'm pretty sure, uh, I'm most confident, they were probably in view somewhere. They saw it all take place. They saw the love that Jesus gave. They saw the sacrifice that Jesus gave. They knew he was an innocent man. They knew they were, he was not guilty of anything that he had been charged with. They knew he was guilty, and they knew that he had the power, being the Son of God, 
to call the legion of angels down to stop at any time and he held his mouth he never called it one down i remember they used to sing a song back when i was little in church called uh thank god he didn't come down well i'm so glad he didn't come down off that cross amen if he'd have come down we me you and i have no hope tonight but because he stayed on the cross because he died on the cross we got hope tonight in jesus amen but what caused them to step out of the shadows i believe it's the love of jesus I believe many have said this. They said, well, how much does Jesus love me? And they've used this illustration. He loves you this much. Just enough to give his whole heart and his whole life and his whole blood on a cross at Calvary so that you can believe in his blood and be saved. We don't hear a whole lot more about Nicodemus and Joseph. We hope know that they took him off the cross. We know that they prepared his body with the ointments and with the the spices they wrapped him in that that sheet and in in the burial clothes they laid him in that tomb that was joseph of arimathea and then they rolled the stone back we don't hear a whole lot about them after that but i can just believe this i believe when we get to heaven one day we'll be able to walk up and ask them say what happened after that and they'll say man we walked we saw the world get set on fire for a man named jesus hey we witnessed it hey can i tell you what i want to see happen in today's time I want to see this world. This is a world is set on fire by a virus. But can I tell you, it can be set on fire by the by the, by a revival, by an awakening of Jesus Christ for people believing in Jesus Christ, backsliders coming back to Jesus. And there's a lot of you that's listening to this tonight in our church that God's going to use to be a part of that. I believe he's going to do that. The Bible says if we pray, humble ourselves and pray, he'll heal our nation. And we'll, he'll, if we turn from our wicked ways, he'll heal us. And I believe that you're doing that tonight. I believe that you're praying that very prayer every day. I know I am. I know Mr. Cole is. I, I believe that you are. Do you know that he's going to use you to be a part of that great revival? And man, when we when that last person gets saved and he busts through that cloud, boy, what a meeting in the air we're going to have. Amen. But listen, some of you need to step out of the shadows. I'm talking to church people tonight as well. God wants to use some of you. God wants to use you in a Sunday school class when we get back. God wants to use you in the choir to sing. God wants to use you to play a piano or to play an instrument or to sing a special. God wants to use you just to witness to somebody on your job. God wants to use you, but we're being we're, we're, we're not doing it because we're scared or because we're afraid of what somebody might think or what somebody might say or the devil's telling us we're not able. Can I hear to tell you you're well able tonight? He's equipped every one of us to do the work that he's called us to do. I encourage you, let's step out of the shadows. Hey, church, it's time to step out of the shadows. It's time to stand, as Paul said, did, and say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's time to tell your neighbor. It's time to tell that loved one. It's time to tell that person that won't hear anything about Jesus. It doesn't matter if they don't want to hear it or not. You need to tell them, amen. It's time to step out of the shadows and praise his holy name, and do the work that he's called us to do. Hey, time is drawing near. We're about to go home. But until we do, we got a work to do. Let's step out of the shadows. Just as Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus did, they stepped out of the shadows and they went to work for the Savior. I, I don't know what all they did after this, but I know that, that they're mentioned in every, uh, Joseph of Arimathea is mentioned in every gospel, and Nicodemus is mentioned in the gospel of John. And could you imagine being the man that gave his grave, gave, gave his tomb to the Lord Jesus? Hey, Jesus knew he didn't need it very long. Hey, man, it was only going to be three days and he was going to be out of it. I don't know what Joseph of Arimathea did if he was buried. I don't think he was buried in that same, same spot. But listen, he gave Jesus his tomb. Step out of the shadows. Can I encourage you tonight? Let's step out. Well, maybe it's on Facebook. Maybe it's walking to your neighbor's house and just standing outside and say, hey, I just want to tell you the Lord loves you today. Man, we can see a revival like we've never seen before if we'll all just step out of the shadows. Praise his holy name. Amen. I want to encourage you to continue to follow the steps of Jesus as he makes his way to the cross and to the tomb. And I can't wait this weekend to, to worship and, and, and give glory to him for getting up out of that grave. Listen, I want you to know this. Before there was ever an empty tomb, there was a bloody cross. It had to go through the cross before it could go through the tomb. That cross is where we find our forgiveness of our sin. Boy, just think about it. All of us sin today at some point. 
And when Jesus was on that cross, we were on his mind. Man, that's powerful to me. What a Savior. What a Lord that we serve tonight. Church, I love you. I encourage you. Let's step out of the shadows and let's do the work that God has called us to do. I love you, and I can't wait to see you again. Let's go to the Lord in prayer at this time. Lord, I love you. Thank you for your sweet word tonight. Thank you for your good spirit I felt in this place. Lord, thank you for loving me. No, I wasn't worthy, but God, I know. God, if I was worthy, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be grace and it wouldn't be mercy. But God, thank you for loving me in spite of who I am. Thank you for using me, God. And Lord, I just pray that you just help me, Lord, to be what you'd have me to be. Help me to, to, to step out of my comfort zone. Lord, it's not out of the shadows, but out of my comfort zone to do what you've called me to do. Lord, to be the influence that I need to be. Lord, help our church people. Give them encouragement tonight. Touch their hearts. Give them comfort. Lord, give them the desire, Lord, to do what you've called us to do. and Be the church. Put legs on those words. And God, go do and minister, Lord, the way that you'd have us do in this time. We trust you in all that you do. Give us patience, Lord, to wait on you. Lord, we know that you're doing. And we know that when you accomplish that, that you set forth to do through all this, Lord, it'll be over. And, Lord, it'll be for our good and for your glory. God, we trust you in that. Lord, again, thank you for Jesus. Lord, thank you for dying for us. And we just thank you and praise you for all that you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, church.